Sarah Palin. Watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is Sarah Palin. And if you want to know why I look so vibrant, it's because I'm introducing Austin's electrifying Perry Logan in an episode called The Strange Case of the Electrified Base. <laughs> wow! Woo. Hey, speaking of electrifying, I'm sure you've noticed there's a certain energy between me and Perry Logan. Oh. It's almost like erotic bolts of electricity fly between me and Perry Logan. This, even though Perry thinks I'm a right wing loony, and I think Perry is a commie. And Perry has asked me, Sarah Palin, to forgo all dignity and do a sexy hoochie coo to introduce his show. So here goes. <laughs> The strange case of the electrified base has to do with something I, Sarah Palin, said. I really said, thank you, Obama, for this electrified base. And we're not talking about Perry Logan and his incredible electrified base. Ladies and gentlemen, direct from a sellout show to Copacabana, Perry Logan and his electrified base. about how the evil Obamacare has electrified the Republican base. The evil Obamacare has electrified the Republican base. And now, Mr. Irony explains an irony. I'm sorry, I'm not here to play the electrified bass, uh, but to explain an irony. It is ironic, it really is, that Obamacare, it is now okay to call the Democrats' health care bill, uh, which recently was declared to be constitutional. I believe that the judgment was sucky, but constitutional. <laughs> So many interruptions in this show. <laughs> but I wanted to point out the irony that underlies the situation is that the Democrats passed a thing called Obamacare. Don't get me started. <laughs> but the irony is that the Democrats passed a bill for health care and uh, kind of turned it all over to the insurance company. It was a really bad bill. The point is, the Democrats stole the bill from the Repubs. The Democrats stole their signal health care bill from the Heritage Foundation and actually from Mitt Romney, the Mitster. They stole their health care bill they really did. They kind of like photocopied the, uh, uh, the uh, Mitt Romney's, the Minster's health care bill. Well, this excites both me and my cat. <laughs> so you see what the irony is, is that the Democrats stole their bill from the Repubs, passed it, just barely, and uh, the Repubs are now like uh, galvanized. They really are galvanized. Sarah Palin, the real Sarah Palin, uh, really did talk about the electrified base. Think about the electrified base while well, I play a few tunes on my electrified base, okay? <laughs> I 
You sure it's okay? Okay. The Republicans are susceptible to electrification. Republicans are susceptible to political electrification. And they are now being, they really are being electrified by pretty much anything Obama does. It's true, anything the Democrats do. And the irony that I was here to point out, I believe, <laughs> is that the Democrats are getting all their ideas from the Republicans, okay? Wow. This is all part of the strange case of the electrified base. Oh, what's that sound? It's an electrified base. It's an electrified base, I tell you. You're watching Austin's galvanizing Perry Logan in the strange case of the electrified base. Now back to Sarah. You see, my friends, the Republicans and the political right in America here on July 12th, 2012, are really and truly electrified. Can't you feel it, baby? We're electrified by Obama. We really do hate Obama. It's because he's a Democrat. And he has done everything the Republican way. And this is driving us nuts. Somehow, the Obama presidency, right wing as it is, has galvanized, electrified, and given new life to the political right in the USA. <laughs> and that ain't good. Mr. Irony. Can't resist, can't resist. Another irony, okay? I'm here to point out the ironies that may get missed. And another one, also about Obamacare, remember Obamacare? Is that the uh, political left, mo much of the political left, the Democrats, the progressives, are uh, defending the bill and praising the bill, which is in no way a progressive bill. Didn't you hear me when I said it came from the Heritage Foundation and was ripped off from the Midster? <laughs> so, it is ironic, is it not? Well, yes it is. That the Democrats are busily singing the praises of this Heritage Foundation bill. Heritage Foundation Bill. Oh yeah, that's irony. Now a little song on my electrified bass called That's There I was, flying along, reflecting on the irony that it took a Democrat, Barack Obama, to help the right get it spit together again. You see, in 2008, the Republicans were on their knees, broken and bleeding from the catastrophic eight-year torment of Bush Cheney, easily the two most feckless right-wing quasi-fascist leaders in U.S. history. Thank the Lord they were not elected. And there were the Republicans broken and bleeding from the utter humiliation of Katrina and the right's obvious fecklessness regarding the welfare of the citizens they're supposed to be helping. The United States turned to the Democratic Party. They would have elected a Democratic dog over John McCain and his beautiful vice presidential candidate, Sarah Palin, who has done a sexy hoochie coup on this very show. Here it is. 
somehow managed to galvanize the Republicans, electrify them, if you will, creating for us the strange case of the electrified base. How did this happen? Perry! Hey, Perry! How did Obama and the Democrats so electrify the conservative base? Oh! What an earnest little question that was you asked me, baby. Oh, <laughs> how did the Democrats themselves manage to, like, jazz up the Republican? Almost, like, kind of embarrassingly excited, aren't they? It is, as Sarah Palin says, the right are electrified. <laughs> Just as you and I are electrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's, it's not good news. Somehow, somehow, uh, and I'm here to explain how. How did Obama electrify the repubs? <laughs> how did he screw up so badly? I think that's the question, right, Perry? <laughs> well, my position is that it's largely because of the... Uh, whole Obamic approach to things. <laughs> I think the Obamic presidency, presidency has somehow lifted the Republicans who were broken and bleeding on the sidewalk. We, and we were all enjoying it. It was 2008. The whole country was just like, well, we were in terrible shape and we knew it. Hurricane Katrina kind of caused the scales to fall from the eyes of the people of America. Here, check this out. Whoa! There was nothing like Hurricane Katrina to cause the scales to fall from the eyes of the American public and they thought, whoa, these guys are incompetent. These guys don't care what happens to the people of New Orleans or New Orleans itself. It's the furthest thing from their mind. We, the American people, will elect a Democratic dog before we elect another Republican. It was that bad. It is as Perry Logan says, the right were broken and bleeding on the pavement, so to speak. You realize that's a metaphor. And the scale, so to speak, fell from the eyes of the voters. And you would think it was all over for the Repub. You would think, as that strange voice just said, it was all over for the repubs. In 2008, I kind of thought it might be all over. I mean, how could the Democrats screw that up, right? <laughs> oh, well. And why did that help the repubs? The first thing was a sin of omission, a huge, a very serious sin of, om of omission. I'm not playing around about this. Obama should have. Obama should. That's what I'm saying. He should have prosecuted the Bush Cheney traitors. That would have taken some kind of courage, uh, political courage, okay? We're talking about the political animal, the part of Obama that's political. And it, he didn't have that kind of courage. And I think it was not optional, don't you see? Yeah, yeah. Don't you see, it was not optional that Obama would have to punish the traitors, Bush, Tra Cheney, punish the fascist right-wing traitors who stole the election and then instituted torture across the land, cries of misery fell across America, and then the great economic implosion. The great economic implosion? That's right, George. And followed quickly by the horrible indifference to the people of New Orleans with Hurricane Katrina, and you had Republicans down for the count. But what went wrong? I'm trying to tell you. Uh, the Republicans uh, would have 
You see, they, they really are guilty of a lot of terrible crimes. Bush, Cheney, and the Republicans. They are. Sorry, that's kind of a given on the show. Get on the web. Uh, <laughs> and Obama, instead of prosecuting them, has in fact perpetrated more of them and gone beyond them in a way that's just kind of interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> okay. Appalling and, and, and amazing. This, this is kind of what's going down now. Come on, man. The Republicans should be on the ropes. There should have been prosecution after prosecution. You, talk, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, prosecutions, investigations. Dick Cheney should be in jail. He should be in jail, servicing his roommate. Just a thought. <laughs> Perry. Ah, yes. Come here, come here, come here. Sometimes it's okay for you and I to get close, all right? Obama could have put those repubs on the ropes by investigating and prosecuting and put Dick Cheney in jail. For that matter, Obama should be in jail. That's what's going on. <laughs> but Obama, by not prosecuting these criminals, sent out the clear message, how could it be otherwise that Hey Republicans, you can do anything. Hey Republicans, I'm not going to prosecute you for anything. Same with the bankers. This is me, Barack Obama, the worst Democrat ever, the second successive worst president ever, having wrested the crown from the pointy little head of George W. Bush. The pointy little head of me, the pointy little head of you. You see? If you don't punish a crime, the criminals get the message. And that's the message that I sent out to Bush, Cheney, and the bankers. And this, you see, has helped electrify the right. Now watch this. Now back to Perry. Perry. Hey, Perry. What else did the Obama administration do to electrify the Republican base? Electrify the Republican base. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hey, the show comes with shtick, okay? Well, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Obama did a lot of things that the Republicans perceived as weak. He did things. Keep in mind, Republicans see things in very crude, almost cartoon-like uh, ways, okay? Here, there, you see? Ladies and gentlemen, this is how the world looks to a Republican. It's kind of a cartoon, kind of an allegory, if you will. And some of the things Obama did to placate the Republicans were in fact perceived as weak. This is Perry, the cartoon character, telling you much of what Obama did to placate the right has infuriated them and electrified them. <laughs> One of those things was all that nattering about bipartisanship. <laughs> Obama, don't you know bipartisanship is treason? Right? Damn straight. Bipartisanship is treason. Right? Right. Bipartisanship is treason. So, the talk of bipartisanship, which I, I guess Obama thought he could sell, it, it infuriated and electrified and galvanized the right, who now stand before us as a great political titan. This awful thing known as conservatism, this terrible thing known as the right, okay, <laughs> to put it another way, this terrible thing known as the right is after three to four years of Barack Obama rampant, a giant colossus crushing people beneath its feet and walking amongst us and getting ready for a political takeover. <laughs> Thank you.
Daddy. Yes, Jenny. Are you electrified? Oh, yeah, Jenny, I'm electrified. But what about the left? What about the left? Has Obama done anything to electrify the left? Oh, I wish you hadn't asked that, Jenny. You take after your mother in that respect. You ask the hard questions. Well, the effect, Obama, the effect of Obama on the left, I, I regret to say, has been just the opposite. Perhaps in everything has its equal and opposite reaction. So while the pubs were being kind of like lifted off their knees and giving themselves new cred, you know, aided by a whole lot of things Obama did, I think largely to placate them. He infuriated them. Never mind. Meanwhile, I think he's kind of knocked the stuffing out of the left. Not, not to put too fine a point on it, I think, and I regret to say, from my own personal observation, Obama has kind of let the air out of the left's head. Obama, the Obama presidency, while zapping and galvanizing, electrifying the right, has, so to speak, let the air out of the left's head, like this. Whoa, look at that. Harry Logan is willing to crush his own head to make a political point. I think this is another thing that sets Harry Logan apart from the pack. But don't you see, my friends, while the right have been getting totally zapped and brought back on their feet and have somehow transformed in the space of a few years from a body broken, bleeding, and painted to head split. Turedian moment. Ah! Yes, a Turedian moment, if you will. Into a veritable political colossus, the turnaround came about in the Great Shellac. The turnabout of Republicans really hit its stride with the great shellacking of uh, 2010. Remember that? Well, uh, I think this, the blame for this uh, lies squarely on Obama's shoulders for have so dispiriting the left and kind of like compressing the head of the left like this. <laughs> so, uh, this led to this uh, amazing mismatch in 2010 when the Republicans really did uh, make huge strides, just like absolutely destroyed that whole democratic thing that we thought we had going. That's the long and the short of it. <laughs> it ended in 2010, you see. That was a, a historic bummer for the left, I, I'm the first to admit. And, you know, hey, wait a minute. It's not like the Republicans did anything. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> No, it's not like the Republicans did anything to deserve it. It was Obama acting more like a Republican than a Republican and at once electrifying the right and letting the air out of the Democrats' heads.